morning all. All right, starting off with a top 10 list video today. Something a little different. So we always have the discussion of a player reaching that next level. And it is such a nebulous term that I would totally understand once I'm done this 10, if people come up with another 10, because that's kind of how that works. Um, and I mean... There are some channels that make a living doing that, where they'll make a top 10 list and then go, here's another top 10 of that exact same topic. And you're thinking, well, how does this top 10 rate to the other top 10? So is this 11 through 20? Or is this another, would these top 10 overlap the other top 10? It, it, it does fall apart if you really think about it. So it's best not to think about it. But in this case, I'm talking about 10 players that I feel like have upped their game offensively so far this season. And... I have ranked them in order of which ones I think are most likely to maintain those point totals going forward. So uh, the one at number one, I think, is most likely to, yes, is is that absolute superstar player. The one at 10 probably fades a little bit, and uh, we'll get into why. And I'm going to go through their point totals, plus their scoring over the last five games that they've played. So at number 10, the Florida Panther, it is not Sam Reinhart. Because I feel like Reinhardt was a star last year, like a, a superstar, and that this year's start, it's it's an excellent start for him, but Lundell's the one that I feel like's taken that next step. So in 15 games, he has six goals, eight assists for 14 points. Now, in his last five, last five games, uh, Lundell, one goal, two assists, three points. Now... Uh, Lindell stepped up when Barkov was out. When Barkov came back, we knew that that would at least cause Lindell to play a little bit less. And that seems to be the case. And Barkov's numbers since he came back have been fantastic. So Lindell over his last five games has a goal and two assists. Uh, but overall, six goals, eight assists, 14 points in 15 games. And showing that that potential we've seen from him over the last few years uh, is being realized, and I think he'll stay near that point per game mark, but it'll probably drop off a bit because you do have Barkov back in the lineup. He's going to take some of those prime opportunities, but Lindell's still going to be a very good scorer for Florida. Number nine on the list, Colorado. It is not Nathan McKinnon. It is not Kale McCarr because, again, already superstar players, absolutely. But Middlestad, to me, is an interesting one. Uh, Middlestad has played 16 games this season, 6 goals, 10 assists, 16 points, so he's at a point per game. Uh, over his last 5, uh, no goals, 3 assists for 3 points. I, I don't know if Middlestad's going to be a point per game player for Colorado. However, uh, he is going to get an opportunity to play with some really good players, especially once they get healthier. So there is that chance Middlestad stays around that, that point per game mark. Uh, he was never going to get there in Buffalo, I don't think, anyways. So being traded to Colorado, I think, was great for him. Just like Byram going to Buffalo, I think it's been great for Byram. Um, Byram's numbers have been very good. I, I did look at Buffalo as well when I was doing this this list up. So Middlestad's really taken that, and that's the point of this video, right? Taking that next step this season. So, yeah, I, I think he can stay around that point per game mark, maybe a little bit beneath it. Uh, number eight. The first of two kings on the board. Now, why would I have Laferriere higher up on the list than Middlestad or Lindell? Because Laferriere is still playing top minutes. He's going to play top minutes. And LA is not a team that has as many offensive weapons as Colorado or Florida. So it feels like he's going to get more of a chance to stay in that spot. In the last five games, he has a goal, three assists for four points. Uh, Laferriere's nine goals in 17 games. I don't know that he's going to be able to score on at, at, at that rate with goals for the rest of the season. But being around a point per game, I could see that. We saw how talented he was in his rookie year. Uh, the points didn't necessarily back it up, but the work ethic was there too. And when you work that hard every single shift, you're going to win over fans, coaches, general managers, pretty much everybody. And Laferriere is definitely a guy who's willing to put in the work. So... He gets number eight on the list for me. Number seven, Washington Capitals. First of two Washington Capitals as well. So I didn't uh, follow my my rule about only one player per team because I felt like this was different. Uh, Dylan Strom, 14 games, four goals, 18 assists, 22 points. 
Uh, Strom's going to be going as long as Ovechkin is. He has a goal, eight assists, nine points in his last five games. So Dylan Strom, a player who was not retained by Chicago as a restricted free agent not that long ago. But when you get to play with guys like Ovechkin, Wilson, etc., uh, you're going to get your share of points. And Strom's been excellent. He's a good setup man. Again, the 18 assists of 14 games is fantastic. I don't know if his assists are going to stay above one per game. I, it's probably going to depend on Ovechkin. And I had thought about including Ovechkin in the list just because it feels like he has really jumped up. But that might be for a, a bounce back video. So uh, don't be surprised if there's a bounce back candidates one as well. I, I honestly think that the NHL should have a bounce back award. Because I don't think we'd have a problem finding players that would qualify for that award every year. But yeah, Dylan Strome, number seven on the list. Again, nine points in his last five games. Ridiculous. Probably not going to score over 100 points this year. But I don't know if I bet against him at this point. Uh, number six, the other LA King on the board. And for Brant Clark, he has seized the opportunity. So when Drew Doughty gets hurt... For obvious reasons, a lot of concern in L.A. Monks, fans, coaches, probably players as well. How are you going to survive without Doughty? But Clark's done well. 17 games, 2 goals, 11 assists, 13 points. And over his last 5, he has a goal and an assist for 2 points. So I, I don't know if Clark's going to continue to, to produce at this rate once Doughty's back. But he has definitely carved out a spot for himself on the roster that it will be difficult for Doughty to just bump him out of completely. So, Brant Clark was seen as, you know, the next big thing on the blue line for L.A. It looks like he's reached that level now. Uh, I, d I don't think we're going to see him go back. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is the big breakthrough we were waiting for. Uh, and an honorable mention to other men other members of the Kings so far this year, too. Because, honestly, they it feels like they've kind of overachieved a little bit. But that's that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time. So we'll have the other Capitals player now. So we go Kings, Capitals, Kings, Capitals. Not intentional. It's just fun when it works out that way. And remember, these are this this is going in order of which one I think is most sustainable. And Connor McMichael, I think, is just an excellent player. Uh, in the in fourteen games this season, he has ten goals, six assists for sixteen points. Over his last five games, he's getting overshadowed by Ovechkin for obvious reasons. But he has five goals, one assist, six points over his last five games. So, yeah, McMichael's showing that he's that talented. And Washington took their time with him. But, yeah, he's become excellent. So someday uh, we could be looking at the scoring going, okay, McDavid, McMichael, McDavid, McMichael, Connor McDavid, Connor McMichael. Okay, we can't mix these two up again. Or I'll be doing that before video. Uh, but, yeah, Connor McMichael, I think, is legitimately turning into a star player this season and it's kind of been fun to watch number four and again this is for most likely uh vegas it's not eichel why would it be eichel eichel's just back to being what eichel was in, in buffalo that's all we always knew the talent was there now dorofiev i have been a big fan of dorofiev's for years i've talked him up plenty um i can't write the number 15 apparently when i'm talking yeah, I've got erasers. I know it's just easier just to do it with the... Yeah, it's easy. Anyways, uh, so yeah, 15 games. Eight goals, three assists, 11 points. Lost my place for a minute there. And over his last five games, he's got four goals. Uh, Dorofiev is a very good goal scorer. Talented player. Good speed as well. And I, I think that with Vegas losing players over the last few years, it benefits a young guy like Dorofiev. And he's jumped in. And he's, he's grabbed the bull by the horns, so to speak. And that, that actually happened. I'm, I'm not going into the White Goodman bit. You guys are just going to have to watch dodgeball yourselves. But yeah, four goals over the last five games for Dorofeyev. And I, I do believe that uh, we've seen him uh, start to become a star player in the NHL. Definitely, I think, taking that next step. Now, for Ottawa, this is kind of a bounce-back candidate. But I thought, you know what? He has taken his game to the next level. Uh, while it's been a, a, a mixed bag for Ottawa so far this year, honestly, with Stutzla, it's been fun to watch. 14 games, 6 goals, 13 assists, 19 points. 
in his last five games. One goal, four assists, five points. So one point per game over the last five, but above a point per game overall. And I think that Stutzla should be able to maintain that level of production. He very well could be a 100-point producer this year. Uh, I think he's that good. I'd be very surprised if the scoring drops off tremendously, keeping in mind that Ottawa does usually go through some tough times in November. Maybe the scoring dries up a bit. Maybe that's why he's only got one goal in the last five games because November reasons. But uh, Stutzla, to me, is one of the better players. Uh, definitely, I think, the best forward on the Sens, which is a debate we could have. Uh, between him and Kachuk, I would think, although the argument could be made for Giroux, and some might even say Batherson. What about Norris? What about Pint? I guess you could say Pinto. Sure, why not? But yeah, Stutzla, 19 points in 14 games. Excellent start to the season. Number two. <clears throat> so if you want a player who's taken their game to the next level, Marty Natchez. Uh, Marty Natchez, 14 games with Carolina this year. Eight goals. 16 assists, 24 points, and over his last five games, three goals, six assists, nine points. Uh, Natchez has always had that level of talent, and I've seen the frustration at times with Natchez that the talent's there. The production in previous seasons hasn't always been there. I think now that that light switch has gone on, there's no reason to think it's going to turn back off. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have the last five games up here, too, was to point out that, you know, sometimes what you see in this column may not match this column uh, in terms of points per game and all that. But with Natchez, he just seems to be getting better. And his production has been insane over the last, he's got, what, a 10-game point scoring streak, something along those lines right now. And I think he's legit. I think he's a star player. And it's interesting because these are the numbers I had expected from Sebastian Ajo. Uh, last night during the Vegas game, they were talking about how... Um, you know, Carolina kind of feels like they could get more from Ajo. And I said out loud to the TV, yeah, I, I absolutely think they could, which is not an insult to Ajo. It just shows how much talent he has. But Natchez, on the other hand, has done quite well, which brings us to number one. So coming into this season, I would argue that Kaprizov was already one of the best players in the league. I would argue top 20. Sure. Uh, Kaprizov this year, 15 games. 9 goals, 19 assists, 28 points. In terms of points per game, <clears throat> he's only behind Nate McKinnon. And over his last 5 games, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points. And out of those 5 games, there were 2 games where he was held without a point. Meaning he's had 7 points in his last 3 games since that 5 game patch there that we're using for this. Uh, the first 2 he didn't have a point in. Kaprizov is a sensational player. I have said from day one that Minnesota, who could be a bit of a, a chore to watch at times uh, for the, the style of hockey, which is not necessarily the most exciting, when Kaprizov's on the ice, it changes. Um, and and to, this, to this point, too, I would say there are times where a Minnesota game can kind of feel a little bit plodding. Then you're like, hey, things are kind of exciting. Why? And you, you notice that Kaprizov's on the ice. And he's out there, him and Zuccarello have this amazing chemistry together. So, yeah, to me, Kaprizov has really become not just a star player, but one of the absolute top players in the league. I think he's taken his game to that next level. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember, this is a list that I don't think there's a wrong answer to. You guys can let me know why I'm wrong in the comment section below, though. Go, right, go, go for it. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Do hit like and subscribe in the event that you may not have done so already. And I just thought, hey, kind of a fun thing to talk about. Players who have reached that, say, next level and whether or not they're going to stay there. I think all 10 of them can. It's just ranked according to which one I think is most likely, which to me is Kaprizov, to Lundell, who I rank as least likely, only because of the fact that with Barkov back, it will negatively impact his point totals. It will not negatively impact his play, which is not the same thing, but there are times where on the internet people just look at points and so when a guy isn't necessarily putting up points, the same they go, well, he's not playing as well. And that may not be the case. But that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time, in essence. So thank you guys so much for watching, uh, for all your support. Hit like and subscribe in the event you may not have done so already. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.